Driver. Hi everybody, we're here this Sunday at home. Uh, I have roped in the whole family here. My son-in-law Elliot is the model. I've got my husband Alan as the cameraman and my daughter's going to hopefully look at some of the questions you might bring forth during this uh, episode. We're here really, uh, hopefully why everyone's sort of tuning in, to look at low budget, easy things to buy, simple things, cost effective ways of creating some skin effects. Mainly things like peely skins, eczemas, the burns. This was partly sort of inspired by the brilliant job that Pippa Woods did a couple of weekends ago using the silicones and some uh, plastic. But there, before silicon came along really, and gelatin pieces, this is, we did have to resort to other means to create certain effects. And on the whole, up until a certain point, going back to the 80s, really to get any skin peel, it was always sort of latex with perhaps porridge oats, you know, the muesli type of thing, crispies, anything like that. Um, so we started to look at different ways. And what I have done, just to sort of save time on Elliot's arm here, is I've got variations on a theme of peeling skin. Now, the first, the, the cheapest is going to be, believe it or not, which isn't totally skin friendly, is Copydex. And Copydex has managed to, you can get quite a good pulley peel of skin here, should you want to, which is very similar to eyelash glue, but is a thicker, but I can actually get that up and peel nicely there. And obviously then you come in with your red, your soreness or blood or whatever you like. This is old age stipple and uh, it took a little bit longer to dry and I haven't actually bothered to pick at it too much. Sorry, Elliot, I only did a couple of layers, yeah, so it's right. quite thin as opposed to copy decks. But you can start to get the peel, as we all know from when we've tried to, when we take it off with the warm flannel and so on. So you can get peel this way, okay? Um, and then moving on to that, this is gelatin. So this gives a different type of cracking altogether because it's very dry, papery, sort of wafy sort of peel here. A bit like when skin, when you've got sunburn and you then get sort of skin that you can pick off. And believe it or not, up here, and it, this is, takes a little while to dry, but this is actually gathquat. And we tend to all have gathquat in our kit. And it was through doing that really, myself and students when we're doing ball caps and putting the hair up, gelling it with gaff quack, we realised one person said, gosh, doesn't it make good peely skin? And of course you think, well, actually, yes, it does. So all these things are, are, are usable. And last of all is silicon. Now, I've chosen to use just third degree because third degree is one of the cheapest of the silicones. Um, and uh, obviously, sin um, here, it doesn't dissolve at all like some of these. Nor latex obviously doesn't dissolve, but these, these two could be dissolved with warm water. But what's great about the silicon, I think, is that when you apply it, if you mix it up, apart from making wounds and things like that, if you apply it very thinly onto the skin, so I just used a, a plastic palette knife just to slightly smooth it over Elliot's skin here, and I chose the palm because what's great is you can actually peel it off and um, if you make it a bit more erratic, you could get gaps, but you actually get the whole skin imprint. Now, interestingly enough, that's quite nice because you can gore that um, and make it look quite good. But what is quite good is if you could get hold of your artist from hygiene point of view, you could pre-do a lot of this, peel off bits and actually have bits of skin that you could then possibly glue over onto other bits, should you ever need to do it, have a stock of skin, really. <laughs> very simple, very easy, but actually quite effective. And I have actually done this, um, but I advocate hygiene-wise that it really should be taken off the artist rather than your own skin. Uh, but quite a neat trick. So I've done that and I've sort of labelled them here so that we could uh, see them in their own. and. The one I'm mainly going to show you today, because we can go on to sort of burns, really. Uh, this one, obviously, here, that I'm going to talk mainly about gelatin. And gelatin can be used. We, we learned this a long time ago, back in sort of 80s, that ordinary cooking gelatin that you mix up to make your jellies and so on, goes into food supplements, makes very good cracking skin or, in fact, blisters. Um, 
The only thing I would say is that it has to be, uh, vegetarian gelatin does not work really, nor do the sheets of gelatin. So if you have somebody who is a vegan or um, a vegetarian, it's, you may have to rethink, hence why we go into other mediums. A lot of what we choose to pick to do really depends on budget, time, temperature, the, you know, the, where you're filming in ice cold conditions, real heat, um, and uh, element, mainly cost and, and um, time, and, and also whether your artist actually has any allergies. Uh, most of these, apart from possibly if you're using the latex energy, uh, eyelash glue, uh, possibly the old age stipple, which obviously is latex based, uh, then, you know, uh, you have to rethink what we do. So uh, I'm going to just use this ordinary cooking gelatine, very cheap from any supermarket or boots. And there are two methods, really. One is gelatine just mixed up with water. And what I did was with one sachet, 100, uh, I put 100 mils of water and mixed up one sachet. It must be mixed well. So in fact, I did use... Uh, oh, this one's got sort of, I might have to melt this one down again to be able to use it. Uh, but uh, this whisk, just to help me get rid of all the granules. And um, gelatin and water, basically the rule is, will crack. So I've pre-done, a bit like I did here on Elliot, just uh, two layers, mainly, on his arm to get it started. Now, this is great, obviously, for things like eczema, peeling skin from sunburn, uh, psoriasis. The downside of anything like this, of any of these things, is that um, it doesn't go well into hair. So if you're dealing with eczema, it, you can actually get away with some of it going in. Um, but obviously with a burn, burn burns away hair. So like Pippa got rid of some of the hair on her, her friend, then you'd have to do the same. But on the whole, uh, with eczema, certainly, luckily, a lot of it goes on parts where people aren't generally hairy. It tends to be elbows. Was the water warm? Yes, very good point. The water has to be hot to melt it, which equally means that you need the facilities, as you've just realised, this is, I made this up a little while ago, and this is starting to solidify. I can mix it, but there becomes, when I, this one, sorry to interrupt here, is glycerin water plus the gelatin. So the added di addition is glycerin. And once you add glycerin to this mix, you lose any form of cracking ability. So in all, f honestly, you have to know what you're aiming for. If you want just cracking skin or peely skin, it's gelatin and water. If you want any form of blisters or swellings, then it's gelatin, water and glycerin. And to 100 mils of water, one sachet, and I used about a good two teaspoons of glycerin. But this is really easy, it's like cooking, and this is why it's so good for people to practice, especially during this lockdown period. Before you may want to invest in the expensive silicones to do things, it's an easy, cheap way to go and practice what you, how to do things. And um, the main thing here is that uh, if you go too much glycerin into something, it just becomes a sort of a bit of a shiny mess and won't really dry off. If you find that you haven't got enough, if it still cracks rather, it means you haven't put enough glycerin in. So glycerin and water, uh, sorry, gelatin and water, hot water, uh, which means also that you need to test it out that you're not gonna genuinely <laughs> burn your artist. Um, it melts it, mix it in, and then applied, I like to do it, with a stipple sponge that's quite open. There are variations of these, it's about three versions, and one is far more, far more compact. You can do it with it, but it's easier to do this, so you break the areas up. Some people paint, but painting is great for doing a swelling or a blister, but to get the areas more broken up and look better, how the stipple sponge is How smaller. durable is this? Oh, it dribbles massively, but the great thing with this is... Durable. Durable, sorry, I thought you meant drip. Just deal with drips. The drips don't matter because you just have warm water. I've got a, a, a container here with hot water. I just wipe them away. But durable, well, believe it or not, it actually can take quite a lot of punishment. Now, temperature-wise, it's better if your artist is cool 
when you're doing it and we would dry it like you put a jelly into a fridge using a cold hair dryer. So I know the new Dysons have different um, levels of temperature. Unfortunately, I've got a good old fashioned one here, but I have a cold switch to it. Um, if not, what is quite good and still works, it just takes a little bit longer, is one of the fans that we use to cool ourselves, which is addition. You can use that and that will do it as well. It also dries prosade and all sorts of things. If you're ever doing anything like that and you want to keep somebody cooler, it will work. It just takes that little bit longer. So cold hair dryer, and then believe it or not, um, you need to put quite a few layers. And the main thing is that when you do your layers, because you're stippling, you want to break that area up. And hence this stipple sponge is quite good for that. So you don't coat a whole layer, you break it up. You deliberately do that so that as it dries, you can crack it. Now you will see that it's still quite shiny. I won't lose the shine if this is dry. If it's still damp, and I, need, and I want to know whether I've got areas of dampness, if I get a powder puff, and I deliberately keep old powder puffs for use of this, because you often, nice new ones often get damaged. And compact powders, I'm not quite sure why, just go better than loose powder. And I've got two sorts here. I've just got a Max Factor, old Max Factor one, and a very cheaper. Do you let each layer dry? Yes, you do. Ideally, because if not, you're trapping wet gelatin underneath. So when we're doing swellings, and I have, believe it or not, done this as a swelling on the eye, um, where the pains taken me, I've painted layer by layer by layer, using the one with the glycerin in, so it doesn't crack over. And it's taken me about two hours, but it looks amazing because it fits the person completely. But each layer has to be dried, otherwise you're trapping wet underneath the top surface that dries. So to test out here whether this is all dry, I can use my compact with my powder puff, but I just sort of tap it. So you don't crack, so do you crack it between each layer after it has Don't dried? have to, it's up to you. It's quite nice to crack to see how it's going. But what I would emphasize is that you need reference pictures to know what you're heading for. So there's some times where we want just cracking, maybe sunburn or maybe eczema more. And then we might want something where we get cracking but also swelling or blisters now i'm going to show you this because i've mixed this up and i may have to quickly microwave this or put it into oh i might still be able to get something out of that um, and um, i anywhere i go then with the gelatin glycerin and water the cracking will be lost it goes so what is two things are quite interesting one and it, and it may say this um, is if you only have the one that cracks, it can be quite tight and the artist can feel quite restricted, but the more you move, the better it becomes almost. Very easy, if you don't like something, to wipe it off with some warm water and very easy to add more if you're getting too much cracking. Now, way back when the BBC did a series of, um, it was done as a series of the um, Singing Detective, where the man in question has horrendous psoriasis. They did it using this way. And in vision, you can actually put cream. And Fran Hannan was a designer on this. And um, you can rub, and believe it or not, it will take quite a good bashing. But if you were to, say, be in a hospital situation where a nurse had to put cream on, you then need to stop because once the cream goes on, you lose the original. So if there was any retakes, you'd have to start again. So with things like that, the director and people like that need to know that it's a one take, that you could rehearse it and rehearse it, and then it's one take. But once it's done, if they want to, you need time to go back. It's not something that takes a long time, depending on how much of the body you're supposed to be covering. Uh, the wonderful thing as well is that obviously this is a food, it just washes off. So that's good news, but bad news possibly if you had a scenario where somebody has bad eczema, maybe or thrust, and has to go swimming or go into a shower. But again, it will withstand that one take and change its look, how eczema or thrust would might look if somebody's gone in the bath or shower, but you need to, if they want to redo it, it's a go back to the makeup room to start again. Um, so at the moment, we've got the look that I'm going to add the one that's got the glycerin in to give me a few swelling uh, blisters here. 
However, there are looks with burns especially where you don't want any cracking. It's not got that far. I mean, if you just think, take a simple burn, if you, I don't know how many of you iron these days, or certainly with cooking, if you catch yourself on uh, uh, the oven, or even uh, a friend of ours lately did it on some uh, kettle with hot water. And initially, the burn doesn't look too bad. It's a red mark. Then later on, it gets worse. You might start to get the blister. And it's when the blister bursts that it starts to get infected and becomes worse. So actually, initially, a burn may not look as bad on some things. And this is where, again, you need to know your research, what you're doing the burn for. Can I colour this with an alcohol palette? You can, but again, alcohol palettes, the great thing is it's water-based. So alcohol is brilliant. It doesn't disturb it. But alcohol-based palettes aren't cheap. So I'm just going to show you a way of doing this with just pure simple grease okay but we'll come to that in a minute because i've now got to i'm just going to see having mixed this up a little while ago i've got some as you can see because like a jelly this solidifies which brings us back to your facilities you need a method to melt this down again now in the makeup caravan or a, a market you may have a kettle a, a microwave however Back in the day when we had to do this a lot because we didn't have other methods, a lot of people invested in baby bottle warmers because uh, they kept it at a constant temperature, which is also something you could go out on set with a thermos flask with your gelatine bobbing around in hot water in it. I've got uh, my chilli mug here that has I actually pre-put some hot water in, which A, when I'm using this, your hand gets quite sticky and this can get solidified with gelatin so just pop it in there but be careful not to, it's not too hot that you burn yourself and then using a towel to wipe it and i keep a towel also deliberately to keep my hands freer of any sticky gelatin because it is basically quite sticky um, so i'm just going to do that when you do that make sure that any gelatin that comes out of that when you've got the hot water you rub off because you don't want to go from hot water into your mix because you are diluting this Okay, so, um, but going back to the whole thing of mixing this, if by any remote chance you found that um, it's still cracked, it just means you haven't added enough glycerin. So it's very like cooking, it's very easy, you, it's not something to get worried about. Now, this is solidifying a bit and it will come to a point where I can't work for, with it. If it really clogs, then I'm not able to build up more slowly. But I'm just going to add to a couple of areas some of this. Now, wherever I do this, it will stop the cracking happening. Okay. Would you use this heating method over a microwave? Yes, you can do. Yeah, absolutely. If you've got that microwave facility, but sometimes we're in the middle of nowhere and uh, you haven't got that. This is also, all these things I'm showing you here really, is that if you were in the middle of nowhere, and suddenly somebody, the director said, I don't suppose there's any chance we could show X when you weren't supposed to. So you say your, your, your artist was supposed to have had a burn, but it's supposed to be covered in a, by a sleeve. And then they say, actually, it'd be really great if we could see something. This is the sort of, so I apologize for the planes, we're in Twickenham and we're over the flight paths. Um, and uh, it means that you could possibly go to the caterers um, or have certain things, certainly gap quack in your kit maybe, uh, the, you know, the eyelash glue, hopefully something nowadays we would have something like third degree. The other thing that is really good is um, this a rapid set silicon, uh, but it's slightly more expensive than third degree, but this will come a bit later. And the great thing with this is it's got such great skin tones with these mixes uh, the adjusters that you can add in if you want to change the surface because obviously I'm doing on Elliot and he's Caucasian if you have a burn or any of these sort of things happening on darker skins uh, it will look slightly different um, and obviously it, the skin is very raw pink underneath so you have to adapt things slightly to change the colours so um, what I'm going to show you now is that that is actually quite gungy in that Brick in the stipple sponge. So I would, if I really want to, I would keep working cleanly. The main thing is to try and work cleanly and have everything around you that you think you might need. 
Um, but what I'm going to show you is again, um, when they do, when you do things like spots or acne, if you mix up the um, gelatin, glycerin, and water, you can apply it uh, directly on. And if you then um, slightly erratically get your stipple sponge, and sometimes at this point the slightly less um, I suppose slightly less open one works. You can actually gently press in and if you powder it with a compact powder sort of to match your artist's skin, you will get like the effect that somebody's had pockmarked face or pockmarked skin, that they've had bad acne maybe in their youth. Um, Would but, you ever pre-colour your gelatin? Ah, very good point. Now, gelatin lifts colour. So if I wanted to do this and make this red, which I'm going to paint in red, and I did it first under the skin to save time. So when you have a large body, you might be tempted to put all the red. If you're doing that with all the silicones and so on, you're fine, as you saw with Pippa, layering up is great. But gelatin lifts color, we discovered. So my lovely cracking skin, if I was to put red underneath it, would come out sugary pink. So no, you cannot put it underneath. It has to go on top. Would you colour your skin underneath if needed? No, that's the whole point. Because if I colour the skin underneath and I only want um, cracking skin, I would, these would become sugary pink, so it wouldn't look right. Equally, I'm not a great advocate, unless you really know where you're heading, of putting colour underneath the product. Because if you don't like the end result, you can't remove that colour at all. It's underneath so you can't get at it. It's like you can buy, um, I should have mentioned this before, um, like from Cryolin, this ready-made gelatin. Now this gelatin will never crack, it's not like the food color, food color, uh, food gelatin. This will, it stays malleable. So this is like, this is equivalent to the gelatin water and glycerin one. Uh, and you can buy this clear like this, you can buy it skin tone, I think you can buy it red. And, but again, it's a bit like a jelly. Once I put food current into this, that's what I get. So again, if I've gone too heavy with red, and red takes over a lot, we see red a lot on camera, and it will spread more. So therefore, I can't get at it. I'd have to remove the whole lot. Whereas if I've painted color on top, I've got much more control. Uh, the only one that actually is really quite good to add to this is a, food, is a milk powder like sort of in the old days we used to call it coffee mate, but a, a, a milk powder, because once that goes in, and I think it's mainly fat burns, but this is where you really need to do your research, you get a, quite a white film on the top of the burn, and therefore if you've got, you decant some, so you don't ruin the whole lot, you decant some, you put a bit of milk powder in, and then you get that opaque whiteness, which is quite good to have, uh, easier to do than actually applying it on top. So um, the other interesting thing is that if I want to just do cracking skin, I just mix this one up. If I want to do uh, just uh, swelling or uh, what I was going to show you, and I think I may have gone beyond it now with this, is that, yes, it has. It's solidified to the point that I need to melt this down. And I may have to get my daughter just to swing it into the microwave for me for two seconds. Um, just melt it down. You can put it in and you can actually make drips, drops, so you can create spots, acne. And I did make for somebody a tray where I painted a couple of layers of it like Pippa did with the plastic. And then I dropped, painstakingly, lots of different size pimples, really, blackheads, whiteheads. And you could actually, it, it held it for transport and for using. And then they had it on their makeup place and could just with tweezers pick off what they needed. Thank you, Nikki. So here, having melted it down for two seconds, what it is, you can see it's, get, get, it's sort of gone round the brush quite a bit, but there becomes an optimum time where I can actually do a whole load of spots. And I don't know whether I can show you that. So the little one was great. That's not so good if I've got Elliot sitting like he is because gravity is letting that drip. So ideally, if you're doing this, you want them in the position that your drips don't droop, if you know what I mean. And you can gradually do whatever you like and build those up. However, equally is getting to know your product because this is where the little fan is more useful because I can blow that gently like this to help dry it. If I did it with the hairdryer and excuse the noise for two seconds, I'm likely to do that 
which has now ruined all my spots because the dryer was too powerful. So it's really, the whole thing with this is, because it's so cheap to go to a supermarket and buy, what's great is not to worry about what you're trying to do necessarily, although good to get some reference, is just to play and to see what these things can do for you and what they can't, um, and learn, because uh, it, this is the way we find things out. And sometimes we forget simplicity and because we have these wonderful other products and actually things can be achieved. Now, I would just like to say quickly here then that Charlotte, I think it was Trendle at the beginning, opted the fact that the picture was dates and possibly honey for the blood. And actually, Charlotte, you got it spot on. Um, dates, very good dates, not cheap ones. You want them really nice and squidgy offer a very good scab. Um, I was using it like skin, but it's extremely good as scab. And I'll, I might show you this later on when I've done this area to show you. But you can, if you peel off the outside, you get this wonderful feeling of, of a skin, really. So dates are really quite handy, as are really raisins or sultanas. I was first shown the idea uh, quite a few years ago by a makeup artist called Chrissy Beveridge, who um, said she always put currants in with her bloods to help give that sort of dark scabby when you get blood and it's congealed and then you get your scab forming. And um, I thought, what a brilliant idea. And equally, um, it was working with um, just helping out really in crowd on Band of Brothers with this tag and uh, we used a lot of gunpowder, I think it's called gunpowder tea from uh, Wittards because you get quite a metal feel to it so it's quite a bit of shrapnel but even just doing that with that little bit of prune, uh, sorry prune, date and raisin you can see you can get quite a nice little scab and of course the great thing is if you get peckish you can just eat it. <laughs> yeah, well, if you don't like it, it's easy to come off. But all these things, you, will, you have got to remember, though, is generally speaking with dates, they just get harder. Raisins gets harder. But this gelatin is actually a food. It's not the cryolin one, so, um, which won't go off. Though this is a food and can be kept and can be melted down, but will eventually form a mould. So obviously you need to bear that in mind. Uh, so going to this, I did a sort of a, a layer there, and to check again whether this is dry, I can take my cheap compact powders, really, or cheaper, shall we say, with my old powder puffs. Any powders, I don't know if you ever use them for taking, when you give them to a man to take off any gluing, of things like that, rather than cotton wool that leaves them like uh, Santa Claus. This sort of thing is great, because don't wash them, but keep them, because when you come to do things like this, they're quite handy. Now, where you see the shine go, the gelatine is still damp. Where it's still shiny, uh, where it's shiny, it means it's dry. Now, if I don't want that shine, the only way around it now is to apply mattifier. And I've got the matte one here, but any mattifier. Any mattifier that doesn't go white eventually will go, you know, when, we, when it gets that white. Feel. But I can use this to just literally uh, mattify some areas if I didn't want to. powder every layer? Uh, you can if you want to see the direction of what you're doing because quite rightly when you're using this and again oh no it's it's okay I can actually use it if I was doing this now and I went back over some of this I'll just do it up here to show you if I do this it's quite hard to see no matter what color skin you're doing what your pattern is bearing in mind this isn't the thinner version of gelatin and water it's getting a little bit of oomph to it here and I can't see that so at this stage though I can't really um, just go straight on with the powder because it would take it off but if I use the dry and I'll just use this for a minute whereby I could answer any questions if any questions have come up no uh, what I will say is that if we run out of time because uh, there's various other tricky trick things we can do. I can, I, I've already talked over with Kate and Rachel, Pam, that we could resurrect this as a, another live, possibly uh, on another day. But uh, I'll come back to that because I'll come to this and get into colouring and I'll just show you that if I wanted to see that shape, it's quite hard. The light reflects a little bit, but if I really wanted to, 
I can get my powder and do that and it will reveal the shape a little bit more for me. Now, the key thing here is I was going to say to you, I call this when I teach as well, the poor man's version of uh, Illustrator. And what we're going to do is I've got some IPA, IPA here. Um, and I'm just going to take some of the IPA and use some of these colours to help colour. Now, I'm not doing, I'm just doing a type of burn. Uh, it's not necessarily following any pattern. It's just to show you the properties. So the key thing is with this is why we like flicking eventually is that as humans, we make patterns and uh, flicking any colour means that we're erratic. So the key thing I think with this is, is to think impressionism and just think of vaguely going erratically. Don't think too closely because what happens is... Um, I think sometimes a burn in real life can look very fake um, and we can do, it could look very similar. The whole area here on Elliot could look very similar. But the key thing is, I think, once it's transferred onto a screen is that if you do that, it looks too uniform. What type of paint is that and is it safe? Yeah, absolutely safe. By mixing, if I just went with grease, this is the Ben Nye. Uh, grease palette but this is I also the cheaper and I will use this if you like is the Krylin one and it's purely and simply their grease palette and by mixing the, with IPA I'm diluting it and making a wash which means it's more translucent um, with a burn once it starts to get bad it's really the bruising colors that come out so not only is it quite good to concentrate on one area and make that area look worse, somehow it lends to being a little bit more believable than making everything the same. So for our cameras now are great, but equally just hold it to a mirror so you get an idea where you're heading every so often. Because when you work closely on top of something, it's sometimes quite hard to see the patterns you're forming. So what I'm doing here is I'm just coming in um, because I've got the, the, the one that's a bit scaly. I want to catch some of that. And really, the world's your oyster now. It's up to you what you're tending to try and affect uh, and what, at what stage. Burns, as I say, tend to get worse um, after a few days. And if they burst and blister, that's when you get the infections. So what I do like, though, is to use my grease palette for the darker reds and sort of almost bruised colours. The vein colour here that I haven't got, I could mix it uh, from this one by using the blue, the green and a little bit of a white or yellow just to take it down. But it's quite handy to have one already mixed up for you just to give a bit more bluey effect in a certain area, maybe. Uh, as I say, I'm really just showing you methods here. But when I come to uh, the red area, I like to use a blood. Now, coming to bloods and going back to our uh, question of what did I use, you can get, I do like Rob Smith's, you, all this is available at Pam, these new, these bloods he's brought out with the silicon, they're great. Uh, and but you need to obviously have access to buy them. This one, going back just to basics, is made up from honey, a bit of dark treacle, coffee, and red food colourant. The only thing I'd say with red food colourant, do not use cochineal because it really stains. But if I just show you quickly here, um, if this is the blood I've mixed up using that method, that's that blood. And getting, uh, well, this is Rob's, Rob Smith's thicker one. Any of, the, uh, loads of, there are loads of bloods on the market, um, and they're all, a lot of them, really good. That's nice and gloopy, which is great. Actually, this sort of thing, also, if you mixed it with some KY jelly, becomes really quite nice and glutinous. And this one is just the ordinary original. These are all the originals, then, were they? They're not the... Um, so if you look at all those three, they're not too dissimilar. But can you tell which one was which now? So this was Rob's original one. That's his thicker one. And that's the one I made up with basically a runny honey. So again, the downside of this one, very much so, 
would be Just in repeat summer. That again. Honey, coffee, red food. Yes, honey, hand. coffee, a runny honey. Uh, you know, like a clear. This isn't quite so runny, but that's quite nice. Or you could do golden syrup. I've got a little bit of dark treacle, dark treacle. Uh, red food colouring, but not cochineal and coffee. You need to dilute the coffee, it's not keeping it as granules. And here, just to go back, so the downside with my, this one is purely, really, that it's quite sticky. Obviously, it can go in the mouth, uh, but in the summer, if it's used a lot on outside locations, you might attract the bees, because <laughs> obviously it's a, it's a sugar. Uh, so I'm just going to clean my hands of that a minute and just come back to this. So I quite like using, um, so this thick one of Rob's is great, but I could have, I will also, if you like, use my, hey, my um, runny one. But this one, I quite like to just bring in the red because when we burn initially, I don't know if you think sunburn, it's not necessarily a bright red. We often go, it's like the pink in the face. There's a lot of different reds there and you want something that gives you both. So a bit of a pinkier red and uh, the sort of more, should we call it orangey red, it are good. Now with this, this is really where you have to be careful that you don't end up with a pepperoni pizza and you, we as, humans we pattern so I go there I go there I go there and I've almost got dot to dot so I want to pick an area that I might make worse and I'm going to take that and just do this is the Ben Nye a standard palette or personalized no that's standard I have to be honest with you I have slightly personalized this one because I've got rid of the real pink the lighter one um, and I've added in a different blue the blue it comes with is a slightly lighter one but otherwise they're all the same colours. Um, and they're really good. And I do call it my poor man's version of an illustrator. And you'd be surprised how good it can look. And when you're learning, if some of you may, uh, obviously there's lots of different levels here. And, um, but when you're starting out, if you actually dilute your grease with the IPA, it's easier to manoeuvre and experiment with. And if you go wrong, it's not quite so strong. Uh, but... I don't like using, if I was doing bruising in any of this, I don't go straight into grease only because it lies on the surface of the skin. Once we use the IPA in it, it becomes like a stain and lasts better. Uh, equally, it will obviously come off eventually with super water or a little bit more IPA. Now, I could carry on with colouring this for a while, but I'm not sure of our time span here. But what I want to just show you is using... Uh, some of these other ones that are darker. Now, what I've done here is I mixed in some uh, currant and uh, current and the honey blood, uh, and I only did it a few days ago. But what is good? Because what I was hoping was that it was going to start to crystallise around the edge. Now it hasn't quite done that yet. But that again, if you were to mix up this blood and uh, put it in uh, and if you mixed it up and put it into a jar and left the lid off and you get crystallizing around the edge it makes very good gloopy bits um, obviously you can buy these sort of things um, I've got one here uh, it is the, the bigger version here with which is the Malperma blood which is quite good to actually this is quite nice if you ever did scratches and things because it's uh, it stays and it gives you something 3d um, but uh, I've done this just to show you that so some, some raisins got gunged into there if that's such a word and I put the blood and it's got thicker because of the treacle and what it can do then is you can pull some of it off and you can then come in with a much more sort of worse part to your look as it were um, and just spread it on. So you can start to get, I could do that with a little bit of the um, date and add in if I want to. And this is sort of, as we did the little taster, just to show you that all things, if you really want this to stay, you'd need to um, put possibly put a little bit of blue, a bit of spirit gum, but actually because of the gunk, it does stay quite nicely. Now, what I want to show you though, is that if you, don't like what you've done this could be the look you're heading for 
But if you don't like what you've done, and I'd quite like to add a tiny bit more green area, as though there's certain parts that are slightly more uh, possibly well, becoming... How make the blood a bit more gloopy? Uh, basically more, if you're making it yourself, you uh, literally just treacle or honey going in will make it thicker. Um, and the more you expose it to the air, the more it crystallises and thickens up and dries up. But obviously you can pre-buy. So equally, uh, you've got uh, Rob, that, that thick blood is lovely because it's really nice and gloopy. So there's a, everything you can buy, but today was really about showing you that as you're stuck in lockdown, if you need to do things to practice, there is a realm of things actually in your cupboards that you can have a go with and play inexpensively. And again, if you want to hold on to your illustrators and you're not sure, just get the grease palette out and play with IPA. But I do say I never use the grease straight on. It's always diluted with IPA. Um, what I want to just show you is a neat little trick now though, using uh, two methods, because these will dry really quickly, but one is slightly cheaper than the other. Uh, M&E Makeup, which again you can get from Pan, the Pinky, uh, basically, Let's hold it. this one here, um, it, with darker skins you can go, you can get the other, he, he does several colours I think in this, and this is I think about £15. Uh, the key thing with any of these products though is to always shut that down after you've finished, because if you leave that like that and the air gets in, they're ruined. Way back we started with one from RCMA and they um, brought them out into a glass jar and they were hopeless, they went off really, really quickly. RCMA is the Research Council on Makeup, I don't know if it still exists, but this is great from uh, Day Stoneham. And what happens is, basically it doesn't like the gelatin, but if you don't like, so say I look in the mirror and I think, whoa, no, way, way too strong, don't like that, um, I need to take down the red because I've overdone it. What you can do is decide where this you want this to go, but let's do it over this. And I'm just going to glue this over like that, and it has to go over, I do emphasize this, um, the area you want. So I'm just gonna pull it slightly more here, like that, for a moment. Uh, the great thing with this though, is if you don't like your design, you can just pull it off and do it again. Now, this scar does dry quite quickly, but I want to catch it while it's still slightly damp because I want to take off the shine because what I want to create, I may have to give it a little bit longer, I want to create as though an, so that, uh, the look that skin has grown over an area. So again, I'm not literally taking my powder button and doing it like a real powdering. I'm just getting hold of this and deciding which colour looks best and patting it over. Any excess powder like that that I don't like, I just get some water and gently just take some of that off so it's not really there. But what I quite like about this is that... What, what was that product called? Sorry? What was that product called? The scar. It's, it's MAE... Hold it over there. It's MAE pinky scar, but he does do olive and I think there's a darker one as well. But Kate and Rachel will fill you in there from the product because you can certainly get this from Pam. And what I like is that you can then pull it. So you get this wonderful effect as though maybe it's wept or I don't know how many of you I was terrible as a child. I always got blisters on my ankle and then I'd wear something and you'd catch it and it would water and you'd get a scab. So you get this wonderful sort of watery effect as though skin's growing over and it's infected underneath. Does the water remove just the powder or the scar material also? No, it doesn't take the scar off. It's, uh, it's because this scar material is a plastic based. So it, it only removes the powder and you don't want to remove the powder on top. Now, if I didn't find this strong enough, uh, I can repowder that slightly because the great thing is I want to keep this skin feel to it. And then if you want to, this is where Rob's blood comes in very nicely. Or let's just try the one I made of the honey. Uh, you can also dilute this and just make it very watery. So it looks as though it's really pulled um, and, it, and it's watered. You know when you sort of move a 
a blister. Looks horrible. <laughs> so, it, but it's a really neat trick to get you out of a problem if you feel you've got too much colour of red or you, you might want this effect anyway. And this was slightly why I came to Kate about doing this as a low budget because it was similar to Pippa's beautiful layering of her silicones to allow colours to come through. Now, um, obviously, Scar is cheaper. I haven't done this with the third degree because you want something that goes off really quickly, ideally. You don't want to be hanging around with this. So Scar goes off very quickly, but the other one that goes off nice and quickly as well, if you can afford it, and I think this is now down to 25. I think this is one of those that once you can afford it, it's a real kit, get, get out of jail card free because it gets you, it can make bullet holes, wounds, scars, you name it, skin, and it's uh, the on skin. And I think this is now 25 pounds. So, and the great thing with this is, used to be that these sort of syringes, once you'd open them, if you weren't careful, they would go off. But with this one, it's foolproof. And the wonderful thing as well is that Rob, you can buy also these from Rob, these um, different skin, uh, sort of, well, they're adjusters. So this is quite pinky, which I need for Elliot. But if I had somebody with much more olivey tone, I can add a snippet, because they're all basically the silicones going in. So I'm gonna squidge out a tiny bit like that. Um, and like with all these silicones, I mean here I did label anally A with both sides because I'm a bit like that uh, because obviously they should not get together before you're ready to use them because obviously they ruin, so any B going into A or vice versa will ruin that. So these two squidged out could stay like that for a while but once I start to mix, uh, Rob's, this goes off fairly quickly so I need to move with it. The great thing with silicones though is of course you can add more as you can with the scar. What's Rob's product called? Uh, Rob's product called is uh, Rapid Set Silicone. And what's the Principality make? The Principality make is, oh is it Sculpt? Jerk Sculpt? On Skin Sculpt I think. Now with the Principality gun they're good but they're runnier. And the, um, the ones to buy, if you're buying those, were the ones that actually say sculpt. And I think they only did two colours that actually mentioned sculpt, which was a neutral, I think, and a dark. They're quite good, but they don't go off as fast as this. And equally, if you do not get the nozzle, once you've taken this user one off, uh, if you tend to use the long nozzles, on, for those of you who know the Principality cartridge, um, but if that's not on properly, everything in here goes off. So um, you have to be a bit careful there. So I'm now mixing this up and I can do exactly the same thing um, if I picked another area. Let's just say, for argument's sake, we go here. Um, but ideally, um, you want to have done your darkness underneath. So it looks as though it's festering. So rather than doing that, ideally what I should have done was taken a little bit more of gunge um, here. Sorry if you heard a doorbell go, but we just had somebody call. So here I need to almost either lift that up and put this in, which I don't like doing so much. I prefer getting it all done before. And then you coat this over, which isn't so easy because as you can see, it doesn't work nearly as well. So the main reason I was showing you this, believe it or not, was to show you how much more difficult it is to do it that way. Uh, and I probably should have mixed up a little bit more to be able to sort of do it as a skin over the top. Okay, so we'll just do this like that and let that dry. So this would just takes a little bit longer to do that. But the key is to do it over the dark so that it looks as though that skin is getting a, a is is like this, that it's it's deep underneath and infected. Um, the uh, other thing I was going to show you while that's sort of drying, and we've, we've talked about this and I can repeat bits like that if you need to, is that equally at home, uh, if you have any icing sugar, something obviously there are the um, whole thing to do with ice and, and um, freezing and so on and that sort of thing. And you can buy a lot of products that make you make that. But what's really cheap and cheerful is icing sugar. 
But again, unfortunately with icing sugar, you do have the problem that it's, it is sugar. So if you were filming this in the studio even, but in the summer and it's hot, uh, it might attract the bees again. But what happens with this is it will actually drip. So if I just show you on Elliot here, not that you get one drip, dripping, freezing, but the great thing with icing sugar. So this was about uh, six te teaspoons of icing sugar with some hot water. And I literally just mixed it up. And the great thing then is with the dryer, you can dry, dry it and that drip would stay. So when if you have to do it into beards or eyebrows or anything like that, A, it's harmless, but it is sticky. So it's not overly pleasant to have on you, but it does work extremely well. So if you were to run out of your snow effects or your ice effects, uh, you could rush to the caterers and say, have you got any icing sugar? Um, the knack is, believe it or not, you need loads more icing sugar powder to the amount of water. It's soon, it's a bit like, I don't know how many of you DIY, but the water get, disappears very quickly. So you need it quite strong, but you need it to be able to drip a bit and then solidify. So a cold dryer would do it. Going back to this area here where I put that um, gelatin, it's now dry um, and I can, by powdering it, I can actually see a little bit more, which I don't know whether you can, but from my head, I can see my pattern a bit more here. Um, and had I done that while it was still damp, I could have gone in here a little bit more. <laughs> sorry. sorry, we've just flicked over. Oh, sorry. right, okay. Um, so it may not register, but I need to do several layers. If I just go in like that, and depress it, you'd be surprised at how you can actually make it look as though there's a pockmarked skin. Obviously, nowadays, we probably use Pro Bondo um, moulds, uh, sorry, moulds for Pro Bondo beautifully. But if you haven't, you can know that this is, this is feasible to be able to do. So I think we've more or less covered everything. If anybody's got any questions, we can reiterate on different things can here. Can you go back through the first arm, please, and tell us what Yes, the first arm. So cheap and cheerful way of doing peel. So this is all for a peel. So the gelatin was the one, as you can see. Now, I can actually scratch that. Your aunties can scratch it. Um, you would want, obviously, redness in between if you're talking eczema, but you can do that. If you need to replace it, it's very easy to do that. However, with all these, we are talking one-offs. Unless, as in when we've done sort of skin disease, you take really good pictures and you aim to get the majority of it back to where it was. So if you have a lot of spots, you need to make sure they, you can copy them really well. So the cheapest was things like copy decks. Uh, this is like child's glue. Uh, this is actually copy decks, so it's not quite child's glue, but it's along those lines. But you get a great pull and you can get peely skin around, okay? Is there any substitute of gelatin for such an effect? Sorry, is there? Is there any substitute of gelatin for such an effect? As this, no. Do you know, gelatin is the only thing that gives you this. Unless you were to peel off some of the silicon here and be able to put it on as, you know, bits of skin... I only, I mean, somebody may know of something, but this is the only thing I know does this as well as this. Before we discovered this, it was porridge oats and latex, and you can't beat this for a look. It's unbelievably good. Do you have good. to see it? No, no. And, you know, if I had done a few more layers, I can do that, and you get this wonderful flaking off. So as long as I've got the right colouring underneath, I could get Elliot in action to scratch or to pick, and it would do that. Can you add colour to all of these gaff kits? Yeah, so then the next cheapest you might have in your kit is this. This is gaff quack, and look, it's it's great. You see, the interesting thing is that with the sort of more copy decks, the acrylic, or the latex, or the silicon, it's a much more skin peel feel to it. It doesn't, doesn't flake, and these two flake. And if you can't get gelatin, to be honest, Gaff quack is amazing. Is the gelatin SFX, is it, sorry, is it the gelatin SFX or the one you get from Pantry? No, this is, the, the, the gelatin FSX is like the Krylin one. This will never crack. The one you buy from the shop as, as a gelatin does not crack. The only one I know, and somebody may prove me wrong, or if anybody does know of anything else, is this gelatin. And unfortunately, it has to be the, um, 
ordinary gelatin, not not for vegans or vegetarians. It's it is this one, and the sheets don't do it as well either. And believe it or not, uh, we went into we were short on it once. We went into a shop that's Polish, I think, and their gelatin did not do the same. They it sort of cracked like this, but didn't flake. So there are different properties of even cooking gelatin. And it's just really what I say to you, while you've got this lockdown period, it is the perfect time to play and not worry if things go wrong. Because also when things go wrong, you eliminate them and you, you don't succeed without going wrong because it is a process of elimination. And you think, no, that didn't really work very well. OK, let's try this. Let me try that. And you colour Gaffquat. Yep, you can colour that. I mean, uh, ideally, you would want to. Um, I've got my man there. Uh, let's just put a little bit of the red. Uh, you, what you have got to bear in mind is that if you're using your um, grease, like Illustrator, um, it's obviously IPA that helps dilute it. If I went in with the bloods, a lot of the bloods, some of bloods are alcohol based but a lot of bloods are water-based, so you'd need your little pot of water to dilute the blood if you wanted it to spread. Um, the other thing is the gaffquat is the water-based, not the alcohol-based. And what would you use if someone is a vegetarian? Well, I'd use the gaffquat now, okay. to be honest, because that peels and it works really well. Um, I think this, just I just love it because of the way it can be pulled and that can look really good. Uh, with you know blood in underneath it if we had to do a real peel where um, for argument's sake Elliot's fallen and you just peel it off this is probably a bit strong but you can you know go in and you get this wonderful feeling that the skin has ripped you'd need to go with a lot a, a bit of darker as well but you can get it and obviously, also, the great thing with that is that um, you could, it, because it's silicon, if you don't like your blood and your blood is water-based, you could wash that off without ruining the silicon. Do you have to fix the grease paint mixed with IPA? No, because believe it or not, the IPA fixes it there for you. It's um, what I always, when I'm in teaching mode completely with students, I tend to say use for bruising because it acts as a wash. And once it's there and it dries, it, you've got it. You haven't got to worry what, at all. What silicon did you use on the hand? That was just third degree. A, because it's cheap. Um, you could use uh, Rob Whitehead's, uh, the, um, this, this one, the uh, Rapid Set, but um, it's more expensive. So I was just using, if you have a pot of that, I just find it spreads, you know, you get a lot of it and it just spreads nicely. The key thing is to spread it really, really thinly really thinly because if it's too thick it just doesn't look like thin skin so actually to be honest I could have even made it even thinner but the great thing is and I don't know if you can see that um, if I pull it off I don't know if I lose it but you can actually see it might be better on Elliot if I pulled a bit more if you can see it's got his skin there it's actually got the imprint of his skin which I think is very good so that about rounds it up for today. I hope that's been helpful. And it's saved to Pam. And it's saved, to, hopefully it's saved to Pam. So if there's any other queries or anything like that, you can replay it back. And um, obviously, what I should just quickly say, though, is I'm trying to wind down my career. And unfortunately, for all of you who've asked to join me, follow me, I don't do it. I don't put pictures on Instagram. I use it only to help Pam. So I will answer any questions you like to send. I will answer, but I don't take on any followers. I'm really sorry. Okay, thanks very much.